Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Juliana and in today's video we are going to talk about my February book for the 12 books of, for 12 months of 2023 and that book is The Horseman on the Roof by Jean Giono. Uh, I, in conjunction with this one, I bought in January another book by this same series that is called Angelo. So Angelo is one of the main characters of the Horseman on the Roof. And here, this book is more like an alternative story, in a way, for this one. So this is more like a draft from the author it could be said like a, re a rehearsal for the main novel, The Horseman on the Roof. So, uh, Jean Giono is a French author and he was born in 30 of March of 1895 in Manosque and he died at October 9, 1970 at Manosque as well. He wrote works of fiction mostly set in the Provence region of France and that is what, happen, what happens in The Horseman on the Roof and in Angelo because they are the same story or similarly the same story, right? So, um, so what we have in The Horseman on the Roof? In this one we accompany uh, a main character that's called Angelo, Angelo Pardi, and he is an Italian. Uh, and we are talking about, we are set here in the 1830s, and in that time Italy was occupied by Austria, and they were divided, and there was a revolt, um, a group of revolt, um, in with some Italians that wanted independence and that wanted unify Italy as one country. Uh, and Angelo is part of that revolt. And we discover not ju not um, ju just at the beginning. We only discover this a bit further in the story, but Angelo has to flee Italy because he lives he is from uh, Piedmontese uh, and he was in Aix, I think, um, that is near the frontier with France and he has to flee Italy because he killed a baron. But in The Horseman on the Roof, that particular story is not well to talked about, so we don't know exactly what happened. We just know between a conversation that, that happens between some characters in here that Angelo did it. Uh, and on the contrary, in Angelo, um, and is here in the back as well. Um, uh, Angelo killed an Austrian police spy in a duel. So that's why he then ran out, ran out from Italy and was into hiding in France. But he had a destination in France and he wanted to get get to Manosque where there, there there was living a friend of his a friend like a brother called Giuseppe and Giuseppe was in exile in France and so Angelo when he flees to France is uh, in the direction of Manosque but at the same time in this period there was a cholera epidemic happening in that region 
And so Angelo, when he begins his journey through France, he passes through some villages and he, found, and he finds the villages almost empty, without anyone to be seen. And when he enters the houses, they are all full of dead people. Uh, and in this voyage, he encounters a, a doctor, a medic, that is surrounding those regions, trying to save people. And that, that, that doctor asks for Angelo help because he, the, that doctor asked the help of the army, but they didn't arrive yet. And so in the meantime, he asks Angelo for his help to try and save the last survivors that they encounter. But the thing is, is that they don't get to save anyone. They all die. And so Angelo has his first shock with the cholera epidemic with this doctor. Then he moves on. So something happens here with the doctor, but I'm not going to say what it is. Um, and he moves on, he continues his journey. Oh, something I didn't say about Angelo is that he is 25 years old, so he is a young man, and he is a colonel for the army in Italy. And he says down, down further in the book that that was a um, position that his mother bought for him, something like that. So his mother has some power in Italy. And he never knew his father. So his mother is really present in his life and he has a reverence th towards her. Um, and that is really noticeable in this novel. And so he continues his journey. He arrives to Manusk. And before he, he begins searching for Giuseppe, he stops near a fountain where he wants to refresh himself. But some people, some villagers see him doing that and they get him and beat him because they thought he was poisoning the water. Because there was a rumor that um, there were people poisoning the water and that was the, the reason why so people got sick. And um, he eventually uh, flees from those people uh, and he hides in a house and he climbs up to the ladders and goes up to the roofs and he passes there in the roofs of, the, of Manusk a few days, accompan accompanied by a cat that follows him for some reason. And it's like a companion to Angelo in those days. And someday he comes down to a window. He's trying to find food and water. Um, and a woman comes out the door and he says to her that he is a gentleman so she wouldn't be frightened. But you know, his appearance, he was all dirty because of the fight with the villagers and he was all grinchy and you know, he, he wasn't with the best presentation. But the woman doesn't flinch. It's like she is a young woman as well. She was in a long dress um, and she doesn't seem to be scared and she invites him to come in and gives him tea and bread and honey and he, um, he was th so thirsty so thirsty that he swallowed it like in a one gulp <laughs> um, and he thanks the woman but he doesn't stay she invites him to stay there sleeping but uh, for him to rest, but he, like a gentleman, he doesn't want to intrude, and so he comes up again and goes to the roofs again. 
Um, he thanks her so much, like, of course. Um, and then he continues in the roofs. And then there is a point that he, he um, comes down again. And when he comes down, this time he doesn't see anyone in the streets. And he wants to find Giuseppe. But in, in the between, he finds a nun. And the nun, just like the doctor, asks for Angelo help. And he, she gives him a um, white blouse and a bell. And he goes with her through the streets, ringing that bell so that people uh, call for them. So the nun like delivers the the the, the ill the ill person to his death, you know, like uh, come come, he's almost there. You will be with God soon, something like that, you know. And then their job was to wash the bodies to prepare them for cremation, because there were piles of wood. In the, in the city where they light up fire so they burn the bodies and so their job was to clean them and he goes with this nun for weeks or at least one to two weeks uh, and it's funny the conversations that they have and um, little details that Angelo um, finds about the nun because Angelo is a, an observant and he's very uh, careful with details you know maybe that that is something that uh, is from his profession like being a person in the army uh, and there's there comes a morning where another nun an arrives monusque and the nun which, uh, with whom Angelo was goes with her. And that's the separation between them two. And so Angelo stops what he was doing and he continues his journey. And he goes to a shop where there was a man and he asks if he knew Giuseppe. And eventually, with some saying that perhaps he was in this in this place and then another saying it was in that place so he passes through some um, people and eventually he finds Giuseppe and then they plan to come back to Italy but come back to another route they plan together that Angelo would go first and then Giuseppe would come would go next behind him and they will they would meet each other more up front and so Giuseppe gives a, a horse to Angelo and he begins the journey again now to Italy uh, to and now he has to leave Manusk. And when it, he's trying to leave Manusk, he gathers around uh, through, uh, between some people that also were trying to leave Manusk. He sees the young woman that help, helped him when he was in the roofs. So the woman that gave him tea. Um, and he goes to her and asks if, if she needs some help. And she says that she is trying to leave Manusk. And so they agree that they would um, mount together. And so they become a pair. And they live together and ride together. And so it becomes a, another journey now with a companion. Uh, because she was trying to get to Gap near Theos that is near the frontier with Italy. So that was in the route of Angelo. And they mount together and they, they go. They have to uh, hide from the, the army 
because the army was in the streets um, blocking pass the passage of people because they didn't want them to spread the disease to, uh, to other villages. So they were forbidden. Uh, they were for, for they were forbidden travelers. Travelers were forbidden, <laughs> or traveling was forbidden. Uh, and when they catch travelers, they put them in quarantine. So they have the assurance that they don't have the disease. And so that eventually is what happens to Angelo and that young woman. It's funny because right at the beginning when, when they met, they didn't ask for names to each other. And it's only after a few days that they ask their names to each other. And so her name is Pauline and she is married. She is young, I, I suppose like Angelo, surrounding the 25 year old uh, years of age, but she is married, she says, to a much older man. Her husband is like 68 years old. And sometimes between conversations, uh, conversations she like provokes Angelo about that, saying, if she, if he th uh, has not, nothing to say about it, and he very promptly says that 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 has nothing to do with him, so why would he say anything about it? So some some Picardies like that, they eventually are caught traveling, and they are brought to like um, not a castle, but. Uh, a monastery or something where there are nuns as well but the army is taking over from them and they are put together in a big room with other people that are there in quarantine as well and so they began to plan how to get out of there and is Angelo that through a um, not so strong door uh, gets gets the door to open and they begin to flee and so they they get to flee um, and they basically continue their journey throughout uh, France so in the between there are a lot of convert a lot or some conversations between those two about their lives about um, the situation in itself. Angelo shows to be a very strong character. He's like, he's very sure of himself and he like never, he always knows what to do, you know? Um, and she admires him for that, in a way. Not uh, verbally, but you know, indirectly, we get to understand that. They eventually are almost arriving to Gap, but something happens. And Angelo will have a big part in that event. So I will not say more about the story. Um, I think that that's like a turning point in the story. I will not say if they arrive at Theos or not, but I have to say that the ending is like an open ending. But I can say that is a hopeful one. And something that is very uh, said and very talked about in this book is of the um, wanting for uh, for by Angelo to fight and to fight for the liberty of Italy and so he talks about that uh, very much um, 
and in, it, it is at that point that the book ends. And so, Angelo, on the other hand, is like an alternative story to what happens in The Horseman on the Roof. It doesn't have so many descriptions about the cholera epidemic because The Horseman on the Roof is very descriptive about everything surrounding cholera. So, you, you have here many descriptions about what happens to the body of a person when they, ha when they are in the high of a cholera crisis. So, um, but I have to say, there, there was some parts in here with some secondary characters talking to each other that I thought they were a bit dragged and a bit boring. So that's why, for me, this book is a four star and not a five, although I think this book deserves a five. I know it's not very sensical, but um, I, I just don't give it five stars because of that, because there were parts in here that I was like, who cares? Come back to Angelo and Pauline. Um, but beyond that, I love this book. It was a journey, like to accompany them in these adventures. And so what I was saying, in Angelo we have him uh, traveling to France uh, as well, fleeing fl from Italy, but then we have him being found by Celine de Theos, that is the sister-in-law of Pauline, so the sister of the husband of Pauline and so she is much older as well and she invites Angelo to go to the Theos castle and stay there for a few days um, and it's funny because Angelo here has ma many monologues monologues like thoughts you know when where we can get into his mind and he's very in here i think he's very unsure of himself like he doubts the things that he do if he's doing them right if he is a gentleman he's very concerned with it and well he goes to the uh, chateau i think chateau to the castle um and he meets pauline um and there are some um, things that happen and some conversations back and forth between them two when they are in activities in the field. Um, and there is here an interesting conversation between Celine de Theos and Pauline, where Pauline was describing when she met her husband um and how he was and uh, because the husband of Pauline is described as a man that has lived his life you know that has known places that has traveled that is well uh, known about the world and he's an adventurer um not he has he has he is not afraid of anything and he sometimes put himself in situations that are dangerous and Pauline was saying that and Celine de Theos was like um, not believing her and in a way commenting about the fact that Pauline was so much younger than her brother so it was a bit of a head to head between those women so a funny part in this book but this book also ends in a more or less open ending i thought that i enjoyed the book as i enjoyed this one i will explain a bit better down ahead when i talk about the movie we well we can do that right now so there is a movie from 1995 called The Horseman on the Roof, 
or Leosard sur le toit. That is the name in French. Uh, that is with Juliette Pinoche, they are here, and Oliver Martinez. So Juliette Pinoche plays Pauline and Oliver Martinez plays Angelo. So these actors right here. And I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies, like for life. I saw this movie for the first time so like 15 years ago or more. I was really young. Uh, I saw it on TV and I fell in love. Um, I love stories. I love romance, but I love romance when they are in a period drama, a period. They are thematic in a way that they are from an epoch from an era, from a period, a period series or a period movie. You understand what I mean? And when they are not so mellows and so... They have to be tasteful. And I think this movie is really tasteful. And so the movie and the book, they are... Uh, they are different and they are not because the director was Jean-Paul Rapneau and he, I think, was excellent with the ideas that he brought to the movie, new ideas, so new plot twists and um, with bringing some scenes from the book itself and some conversations between characters from the book itself. So the movie and the book are not the same. You have to have that in mind. But I think the movie, it's a bit um, in the romance part, a bit better than the book. So now I'm going to give a bit of a spoiler. Uh, so if you don't want to know anything more, I will say goodbye to you right here. If you want to continue, you have to know that I'm going to give spoilers, so be aware of that. If you don't mind, okay, but if you do, perhaps stop the video right here, go read the book, go watch the movie and then come back, okay? So let's go. So the, the, Rom the Horseman on the Roof, the book, doesn't have uh, any romance. So I was expecting that because of the movie. Because I saw the movie many times and I love the, I love the movie and in the movie there is some romance. Or how can I say it? It's a platonic romance but is there. But in the book that doesn't happen. So between the the journey of Angela and Pauline together through that, those days to go to Gap, nothing happens. It's like they are just two people trying to help each other. And they, there isn't a spark. You don't see any evidence that there is something between those two. Uh, and when the book and Angelo wants to go to Italy and he's um, excited to go to Italy. So it's like there is nothing in France that caught him in a way, you know what I mean? So the book ends with Angelo be excited to how oh, my Italy, now I can come back to it. And the book ends like that, it's just so frustrating. <laughs> Because I was expecting to be a bit of um, a reminiscence of love there and there is nothing. So, and in the movie that is not the case. So there is a scene when they are in a house protecting themselves from the rain um, where uh, Pauline touches Angelo's face 
and Angelo kisses her hand. And then he, he get away from her and asks for he asks he asks sorry for what he did. And that is the only caress and only moment where they give in to what they were feeling towards each other. Uh, because then it happens Pauline having a cholera crisis, so she gets affected. And Angelo is in panic trying to help her. And that happens in the book as well. So we, but it's not in the house. It's where they were almost getting to a gap. And Pauline falls on her knees and has a cholera crisis. And Angelo helps her, saves her, basically. But even then, there's an appreciation of Pauline for Angelo saving her life. But there's, at least for me, I didn't catch any evidence that something more was there. But it, in the book, in the movie, uh, there is. Because when eventually Pauline wakens the other day and she's alive and... Angelo gets her to go to Theos and she sees her husband but it's very quick then because then we see her writing a letter to Angelo asking if he was okay, if he at least were alive because between the voyage that they do together Angelo talks about fighting for Italy and he wants to fight and Pauline was worried about him. And so, and then a year later, um, Pauline receives a letter from Angelo that we never know what was in there because in the movie it, they don't tell us and we just see, see her go to appreciate the horizon of the Alps and a narrator tells that the husband perhaps would have eventually to let her go and the movie ends like that so it's an open ending but is a more hopeful ending, ending in a romance perspective you know what I mean so I know it's you must be saying that well it doesn't it doesn't end up all in romance between a man and a woman and I think that's true and I think that what's happening in this one so there isn't um, there's, there n in any situation that doesn't have to have romance and I understand it but for the month of February and Valentine's Day that's why I chose this book because I thought there was going to be romance, <laughs> but at the end it didn't. But you know, you can read the book, I think it's very worth it. But well, I read Angelo first and then I read The Horseman on the Roof. But I think you should read The Horseman on the Roof and then Angelo. So like that. Okay? And then watch the movie because it's really worth it. Juliette Pinoche and Oliver Martinez are spectacular. They are wonderful actors. I love them both so much. Um, and is more... Well, Pauline is funny because Pauline in the movie has more proeminence as a main character than Pauline in the book. Pauline in the book is more like a follower of Angelo. What Angelo says is what Pauline does. And in the movie, it's not like that. There are many uh, deviations from their route because of Pauline, because she was trying to find her husband. And very funny scenes happen because of that. And Angelo is hit her toe like always like a rock to Pauline. It's wonderful, <laughs> in my opinion. I know you can say, oh, you're a woman, you like the romance. Yes, I do, so what? It's also very fun to see romance and it's hopeful to see romance. It's part of life as well. 
and love is love and it's always uh, warm to the heart to see people fall in love and so I love this movie and I really enjoy the book although uh, in spite of don't having romance in it I really adored this book so I really advise you to go and pick it up and in conjunction with this I think it's a good companion so I would advise you to pick those two these two and watch the movie okay so that's it for today I hope to see you in the next one don't forget to use my links from Amazon that I'm going to leave down below it's a way for you to, ha to help me without paying anything more uh, in your purchase is I just if you do a purchase I just receive a small commission that's it and if you are from Portugal I have Wook and Bertrand um, links so you can use them as well and it's a way for you to help me bring more books to the channel so because I spend mostly of my money in books <laughs> so I see you on the next one please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to press the ring bell button to wall so you can receive all my notifications leave a like it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel follow me on Instagram I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else and yeah I see you on the next one bye